Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Joe Johnson. I am here with Joe Oberly. Morning. Morning. Again. Uh, uh, this is a Morning Joe's Part 2. We actually just got done recording about a half an hour ago, and then I saw that Joe had called me, and uh, you dropped a 10 megaton nuke of news on me that I'm still a little hyped up about. Um the Vikings fired John DiFilippo, something we talked about on the show uh, this morning. Something that uh, I think, what was your quote, Joe? Not right now, but at the, maybe at the end uh, yeah, of the season. I was, yeah, I, I'm never an advocate for anybody getting their, losing their job since I've had it happen before. It's not fun. Two weeks before Christmas, even worse, but that's the way things work in the NFL. I thought they'd wait till the end of the season, and they're moving in that direction because clearly the head coach and his OC were not on the same page about how they wanted the offense to run. And when you drop a drop a game like that on Monday night in front of front of the world and and look that inept offensively, uh, and that uh, inept is a mild word. They they looked inept. <laughs> yeah. And and you know disjointed. It, yeah, disjointed, scattered, what have you. But I, I'll say, and I tweeted this: it's it, it's it's part of the problem, but it's not all the problem. So don't get your hopes too high, but they're going to put a, put uh, Kevin Stefanski in and his place is going to call plays the rest of the year. And there was a, people said that there was two camps when they hired D. Philip in the first place that Zimmer wanted Stefanski and, and uh, the, the higher ups wanted uh, 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 D. Filippo because he was the hot name for head coach. Yep. You know, that to me now in retrospect sure looks like a, a silly thing to do because if he's not the guy you want and, especially the coach who has to work with him. If you're just hiring him because he's, he's a hot prospect, you know, and you know, he's going to be gone, then why hire him? You know, that was, that him. was a big question, uh, whether he'd even be around for his entire contract, which is two years. Um, yeah. You know, the, 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 the word on Stefanski is uh, he was kind of a quarterback guru. You know, he got the most out of Keenum. Uh, Bradford had the flashes when he was healthy. Um, and so that could be encouraging, thinking maybe he'll be able to come in and fix whatever is going on with Kirk Cousins, as we as we discussed in the show. I mean, he looks like a completely different quarterback than he did earlier in the season. And, um, I mean, I think the, the crux of what we came up with on the show was that we had no idea what, what the problem was. It's a myriad of problems. You know, this isn't going to correct everything. Clearly, uh, the game plan, the play calling, there was no balance. But Cousins it wasn't making the plays that, that he was earlier in the season, and I don't know if that's because he's trying to eliminate mistakes and, and just being way too conservative or thinking too much. But, uh, you know, something had to change, and it's a good thing that it changed now because this could be a positive with the next three games. Um, you know, just getting some fresh blood in there, fresh ideas. It's interesting that, you know, think, you know, it's easy to look at this now. I mean, you and I just spent the past hour diagnosing the whole game last night, but – when you when you look at how scattered and 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 crazed and, and at times desperate and dangerous and uh, you know just really strange things were happening with Cousins last night, you wonder if there is some you know pushback, mental pushback there where he's getting plays called in and he doesn't seem like it's going to go. He's got to do it anyway, so he's got to try to make the most out of this. I mean, he threw a ball backwards to to uh, not a pitch. I mean, turn around and. Did a short pass to Dalvin Cook last night with a defender right there. It was one of the strange plays I've ever seen in the NFL. And, you know, you wonder if, if some of his skittishness is a result of him uh, not 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 liking what he sees when the play comes in and saying, thinking this is not going to work. I don't know. I, I got that feeling on the fourth and goal, actually, now that you bring it up, that he was standing there and you could just tell by his body language in the pocket that, he was that it wasn't going to work like he either everyone was really covered or he just wasn't comfortable with uh the play call uh because he definitely had time and then he just you know threw it behind rudolph and in, in like a last ditch attempt to make something out of nothing um speculation of course on my part but you know you, you wonder now going forward and it, it to be honest you know i don't want to like i said earlier it's not all it's not all the filippo he got the axe so now the pressure mounts for those that remain and kevin stefanski is the longest tenured coach i believe on staff and he's been around a long time to to you know developing quarterbacks and and, and such and and now it, it falls on uh, a lot more on cousins because if they have problems that are getting 
be similar going forward, you know, then you have to say, we're looking at the $84 million man. I would love to know, and it's impossible to know right now, but um, what, if I, if I could go to TCL, I would ask Stefanski, like, what would you do differently? Um, I'm sure running the ball more often would be the first answer. Um, It's a good place to start, I think. Uh, you know, simplifying the offense a little bit. We talked about that on Morning Joe's this morning. Uh, stuff like that. You know, I, I just, I, to be honest, I thought maybe you were trolling me when you called me because what a fall from grace for for D. Filippo. I mean, this guy was, you know, had head coach written all over him. And perhaps that will happen in the future for him. I mean, a week ago they were saying that he was uh, the leading candidate for the Packers job and now he's unemployed. That is astounding. Uh, Do you think, where do you think he goes from here? You know, I don't know. Um, You wonder if the calls won't be as omnipresent as they might've been had the Vikings played better this year. I mean, uh, maybe he was, maybe he wanted to stay. So he was just throwing me off. I said, no, I'm kidding. You know, I mean, it, you made the point about uh, uh, trolling you. I, yeah, the thing is, we should have seen this coming. I mean, when when uh, when Daniel Carlson missed those two overtime field goals against the Packers, I, I said to the guy next to me, I said he's going to be gone tomorrow. You know, uh, and, or maybe no, it was you know, it, it, that's just how uh, Zimmer does stuff. I, he, to his credit, he's not going to sit around and and and. You know, try to wave goodbye to a sinking ship. He's going to put a torpedo in it and then uh, try to resurrect it and keep going if that tortured metaphor works. But uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, this was this is this is a, a jarring move. It's not totally unexpected. It's 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 unexpected for when it's taking place. It's now the Vikings will have their fourth offensive coordinator in three seasons, which is amazing to consider. Yeah, I I was going to ask that. Um. You know, we're getting a lot of comments from people. Um, apparently, according to Kent, uh, the Eagles fans are, are hyped up to get him back, which uh, I, I agree with what Anthony Campbell says, which is they can have that garbage back. Um, but I, that that is such a great segue because I was going to ask you, like, do you think – what do you make of that? You know, you had the North Turner, Turner drama. He retired in the mid, middle of the season. A lot of that was attributed to um, – maybe too many cooks in the kitchen with Shermer and then also uh, maybe uh, Turner not having the personnel to run his, you know, big tight end running yeah. back stuff down the field. Then, you know, Shermer obviously had some success and uh, left on good terms for a head coaching job. So you don't necessarily want to, it's not like a, uh, not to keep bringing up my pre for article, ugh, but um, it's not the same thing where like, you know, they're just, the turnover is all negative and they're trying to find an improvement. I mean, Shermer left on good terms, but you have to ask uh, at some point maybe what's going on there with Zimmer. Uh, yeah. we've, we've talked about a lot. You know, he, he doesn't just, you know, delegate the, the offense. He, he really just hands the offense over to the coordinator and is pretty hands off. And now that people can see me, I'll, I'll do my impression of Zimmer. This is Zimmer when the Vikings are on defense. This is Zimmer when the Vikings have the ball. And it's uh, – it, 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 I don't know. Maybe he just needs to become more involved. I, if Stefanski is his guy, I'm, I'm encouraged maybe that'll happen. Well, you know, it, it ultimately, I guess you have to look at it this way. I mean, Zimmer is responsible for this team's wins and losses and, and how they perform. So this is is got to be viewed uh, to some in some respects as, a, as Zimmer making a move to protect his own job. Yeah, you know, yeah. At, there's going to be people that I said this, it, the scrutiny comes down on, on dozens even more. Well, it certainly comes down on Zimmer because now he's made this move. And uh, if it, if it, you know, tail spins out even worse, then, then, then the axes start swinging nearby him. I'm not going to say that, that he's going to get fired. I don't think he is, but uh, the pressure certainly mounts. And uh, tomorrow out at uh, TCO should be interesting to see. Zimmer's going to be available. I think this afternoon for a, 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 a media teleconference for, to, to talk about this. Are you going to be able to get on that? I'm going to try to. So we're going to, we're going to see probably hear some more sound uh, on this for the day is over, but it, 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 it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, amazing how hap- quickly it happened. It, it, it does say the Vikings are trying to make the playoffs. So, you know, so yeah, you I mean, this team under the Wolves has, has never hesitated to make the moves. They think they need to, to compete. 
And um, I wonder how much of this what came from them. I do completely agree with you that it, uh, Zimmer is is buying some, not buying some time, but making a move now. Um, I, I we said this on Morning Joe's. You know, a lot of people that I've interacted with uh, since last night have said, you know, just scorch the earth, get rid of Spielman, get rid of everything, tear down TCO, you know, tear down U.S. Bank. Like it's horrible. Um, I think Zimmer gets another year, Spielman too. Mainly, not mainly, but a huge part of it is that, like I said, I'm Morning Joe's. They're they're just too invested in this, this Zimmer experiment. The defense his fingerprints are all over it. They did go to the NFC title game last year. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we quickly forget so – we forget so quickly how, you know, this league, you know, what, what happens. Everything's uh, – what have you done for you lately? I get that. There's a lot of money involved. There's a big business, blah, blah, blah. You have to keep performing. But I don't think you, 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 you totally have – you can forget – everything that's gone on. I, I, Zimmer's got a little bit more rope here, I think, and, and so does Spielman. I do, too. I, I do, but, I mean, just back to my point is that clearly this team, you know, training for Sam Bradford, a lot of the moves they've made show that the ownership expects to win now. They put a lot I, – I know a lot of people are pissed about the stadium, but they did put a lot of their own money into that. TCO is going to be, like, a, its own little city when it's done in, like, 10 years. Um and so they're itching to win, and yeah, I definitely think that the, 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 at least another year. I, I got a lot of crap for my article about Zimmer's seat getting warm earlier in the season. Um, I don't think his he's on the hot seat uh, because the the crux of that argument was if the defense continues to play like crap, he's going to be on the hot seat. The defense is playing uh, the last couple of games. I mean, uh, against Seattle, they look like the defense in uh, in the playoff game. I mean, that game felt like that game without the, you know, sub-zero temperatures. So, um... He turned, he turned on the, the, the seat, uh, heat, the seat heat a little bit with this move. He certainly does. It won't, it, it, if, if it doesn't work out, it won't last for long. The heat will go back up. But, yeah, for right now, this is, you know, the attention will go back on the field. And, and we'll, we'll watch how Kevin Stefanski calls plays. Start railing on him because that's what that's what we do as Vikings fans. Yeah, if, if Spielman and company don't draft multiple linemen, uh, the Vikings last time I checked only had ten million dollars for the salary cap next year. Which I don't know if that includes every year it, the cap goes up about ten million. So I don't know if that is they had no money and that's the cushion, or if they're going to have twenty million. And I I know that they they have. Uh, like an accounting wizard that helps with all their contracts, but they don't have a ton of money to, uh, from a free agent standpoint, pick up, you know, an established guard or two. Um, but if, if they don't do that, I mean, th then I'm going to start calling for Spielman's head uh, verbally or verbally um, out in the open. I don't think they've announced what next year's cap is. So I think the 10 that they have is what they have. And so if, if they do expand it next year, they should get some more. I believe that's right, but I don't know that for sure. So, so we'll see. This was just, I mean, wow. Yeah. This was, uh, I, I did not expect this. I mean, I, I we were talking about Prefer and uh, this, the, the, the loyalty that, that some people say Zimmer has with, with uh, his coaches. Um, but he's had uh, a couple offensive coordinators now that he just doesn't see eye to eye with. Uh, the North Turner thing, um, the rumors about how that ended. And then you have... You know, like you said, Joe, um, Zimmer in the media saying things about disagreeing with some of the play calling, which makes you wonder why he just, as the head coach, doesn't tell, force him to do what he wants him to do. But this is just another example of Zimmer. <laughs> some people think Zimmer like uh, is being sneaky or he'll give us false things to talk. When Zimmer says something, he means it. I mean, there's yeah. there's tons and tons of proof of that. It doesn't sound like he's the easiest guy to work for either. I mean, I think he expects, you know, certain – he has certain expectations. And uh, um, it, like I said this morning, and we'll say it again, when, when for, for it's going on for two weeks that he can't get – he can't get the uh, the offense the, – the offensive coordinator to call enough running plays to, to satisfy him that, that something's amiss and something, you know, that this was cooking, this was roiling, this was happening. It just amazed me that it came to a boil this fast. Yeah, and um, I mean, just to to put a bow on it, this 
God, I just said at the end of the show, one of Joe's, that I don't want to completely be the person that goes from being as down as I was last night and this morning to being right back on the horse like I always do. But this is encouraging to me just because when you look at, like, the Bears game, the Saints game, the Rams game, kind of, the defense didn't play that great uh, last night. If, if, if the offense had just played okay and limited their mistakes, they would have won all those games, Maybe except for the Rams game because they were running on the, the, all over the defense. But, you know, they've been close. They've been in these games. So if they can somehow use this as a positive and do what we said on the show today, which is what did Shermer do? He, he The offense wasn't complicated because they didn't trust Case Keenum. They gave him two options every passing play. He would check down. Um if, if they can do that with Cousins, with his arm, and then you look at the, the talent that this Vikings offense has on paper, uh, good things could happen. You never know. This could be the spark that they needed. I'm just going to say that uh, I'm latching onto this because I need to emotionally. So if I'm overreacting, I'm doing it on purpose because I'm dead inside. But uh, – I well, I'm excited. They didn't change to get worse, so they change to get better. Hopefully, it will work out. Well, we'll find out. Um, I want to thank everyone for showing up. We have a few people watching us. This is crazy. And uh, check out Morning Joe's. I just posted it, and I'll be writing an article about this. I'm gonna walk everybody through. Joe, if you want to hang up, you can. But I'm gonna walk everybody through my background because I'm proud of it. Uh, let's see, what we got here. Signed. Yeah, thanks. All right, later, man. Okay. Everything's backwards. That's a uh, signed Greenway jersey. Signed uh, Jared Allen jersey. I got a 3D stadium. It's like uh, U.S. Bank Stadium sign. Carl Eller's autograph. A Chorus Light U.S. Bank. Another stadium-related thing. A couple of Randy Moss action figures. The state of Minnesota. I got these awesome glasses. This is from the last season um, uh, at the Metronome. This is from the 1992 Super Bowl. It's legit. It's like, you know, obviously 25 years old. Uh, and then there's my Stefan Diggs Minneapolis Miracle autographed sign. The gnomes that we always give away. Another Moss. I like Randy Moss. And some Mankato Brewery. Pur raining purple. So, uh... That's my background. We're going to be doing a lot more video-related stuff uh, this season because it's uh, the wave of the future. But uh, thanks, Ken. I, I uh, got a couple other things I'm going to stick over there and then eventually uh, start on fire when the Vikings blow in. So uh, stay tuned for that. But, yeah, check out uh, Purple PTSD Vikings Territory. Uh, we did launch Purple Territory Radio. We have 12 shows you can uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, even uh, we have a Viking show that's in Spanish. So we're blowing up, making it rain. Thanks, everybody. This was fun. I can't believe they fired him. Yee-hee. Skull.